uh, about the commonalities of how that is assessed. You know, it, it, is it, um, you know, he's rolling out of bed early and uh, running eight miles. Uh, he's showing proficiency in school. Uh, he handles himself well socially at parties, isn't drinking too much, but knows when, you know, it, I mean, obviously they're yeah. integrating multiple cues. The brain is a complex place, yes. but it, uh, it, is there any information about what those variables are uh, across cultures? Yeah, well, I think that um, uh, there's been less attention to that, so that's a great question. Um, one of the things that we do know across cultures is that women attend to the attention structure. So um, the attention structure is a key determinant of status. So the people who are high in status are those to whom the most people pay the most attention. Ah, so the attention of others to them, not how well a, a given potential mate pay, can focus and pay attention necessarily. Yes, yes. Uh -huh. yeah, exactly. And But but um, but women, look, I mean, you know, uh, is the guy, even in the modern environment, is the guy spending eight hours a day playing video games, um, uh, eating Cheetos and drinking beer, or is he uh, devoting effort to his professional development? Uh, so hard work, um, ambition, does he have clear goals or is he in an existential crisis not knowing what he's going to do with his life? Um, so those are some of the qualities that, that, that people look for. And also women use uh, what's called in the literature mate choice copying. And this is related in part to the attention structure. That is guys who have um, uh, passed the filters of multiple women, uh, those are uh, like um, uh, pre-approved, pre-approved men. So we've done studies where you just take a guy, photograph him alone uh, versus take the same guy, put an attractive woman next to him or put two women next to him. And women judge exactly the same guy to be much more attractive if there's if there are, he's paired with women than if, than, than if he's not. And so, and some guys exploit this in the modern world by hiring wing women to go with them on dates and so forth. Oh, this is my my sister, or my former girlfriend, or whatever. Um, so, um, uh, but uh, but 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 you're correct in in mo in that women use multiple cues to assess these things, uh, and, and they change over time. You know, so. Um, you know, in, in the modern environment, even things like the attention structure, does this guy have a million Twitter, Twitter followers or three Twitter followers? Uh, so um, that is an index of the attention structure and hence the status of the guy within the broader community. Uh, so, and, and from an evolutionary perspective, it's reasonable that women would prioritize these qualities because of the tremendous asymmetry in our reproductive biology, namely that fertilization occurs internally within women, not within men. Women bear the, the burdens of the nine month pregnancy, which is metabolically expensive, as well as creating opportunity costs in terms of mobility and, and solving other tasks that people need to solve in the course of their lives. And so uh, one way to phrase that is that the costs of making a bad mate choice are much heavier for women when it comes to sexual behavior, certainly, uh, because um, it, uh, and the, the benefits correspondingly of making a wise mate choice are higher for women in the sexual context. Um, but as I said, we have mutual mate choice in our species. And so what do men value more than women? Uh, physical attractiveness. Um, they rank that as a, a more important criteria than do women about men? Yes, yeah, exactly. Consistently yeah. across cultures. Consistently, and it's not that women are are, are uh, indifferent to it. So women do pay attention to a guy's physical appearance, his, his fitness and so forth. And guys are actually off base in the, uh, thinking that women prefer more muscular men than they actually do. So like in muscle magazines, these men with bulging biceps and so forth, women don't find that especially, but they do prioritize fit men, a good shoulder to hip ratio and other qualities of physical appearance, as well as things like um, cues to health. So, and physical, so physical appearance provides a wealth of information about a person's health status, but also provides for men a wealth of information about a woman's fertility. 
uh, her reproductive value. Now not, now, not that men think about that consciously. I mean, you men don't walk down the street and see a woman and say, oh, I find her attractive because I think she must be very fertile. Um, maybe a few weird people do that, but most men just, it's like, uh, they just find those cues attractive. And the cues are cues associated with youth and health because we know that youth is a very powerful cue to fertility and reproductive value. So men prioritize physical appearance and, and in the field of psychology, it used to, what I was taught when I was an undergraduate, that you can't judge a book by its cover, that physical attractiveness was infinitely arbitrary, infinitely culturally variable, and, and it's simply not true. We know now, based on the last 20 years of scientific uh, studies, that the cues that men find attractive women are not at all arbitrary. Uh, there is some variation across cultures, like in relative plumpness versus thinness, uh, but things like clear skin, clear eyes, symmetrical features, uh, a, a low waist to hip ratio, uh, uh, full lips, um, lustrous hair, all these are qualities that are associated with youth and health and hence have, have evolved to be part of our standards of attractiveness. And so, and so it's not just that men are these uh, superficial creatures who evaluate women on the basis of appearance, there's, there's an underlying logic to why they do so. Um, and as I said, relative youth, this, this age thing is one of the largest sex differences you find in long-term mate selection with women preferring somewhat older men and men preferring somewhat younger women. Is there a consistent age gap um, through, uh, to relate to that statement? Yes, there is. Uh, so the age gap, though, depends on the age of the man. So. Um, so we can document this. So in my studies, what we found is that men preferred women who were about three to four years younger than they were on average. Uh, and I'll qualify this in a second. Women preferred guys who were about three and a half to four and a half years older than, than they were. So there was a sex difference going in the opposite direction. Uh, but as men get older, they prefer women who are increasingly younger than they are. So one way to gauge this, so there, there are actual marriage statistics uh, and then there are expressed preferences and both sexes kind of converge. So if you look at, um, you know, first marriage, second marriage, third marriage, as if people get divorced and remarried, average age gap is, uh, in America anyway, is three years at first marriage with the guys being older. Um, five years at second marriage and eight years at third marriage. Um, uh, so that is, as men are getting older and getting divorced and remarrying, they are marrying women who are increasingly younger than they are. Uh, in terms of preferences, it's also expressed in preferences. So it doesn't go down. So, so like a, say a 25 year old man would say prefer a woman who's 20 or in her early 20s. 35 year old man might prefer a woman who's in her late 20s or early 30s. A uh, 50-year-old man might prefer a woman who say 35 to 38. So so the, the preferences do go up, but the gap gets increasingly larger. And the reason that you don't see things like, um, why aren't men preferring women? So peak fertility in humans is around age 24, 25. Um, and so you say, well, why aren't the 60-year-old men prioritizing 25 year old women. Well, as I mentioned, we have a, it's a reciprocal mutual mate choice phenomenon. So she constrains the equation. She, well, she, she constrains it, but also uh, marriage and long-term mating are uh, things other than reproductive unions in the modern environment. That is there, um, you know, we, we, you're supposed to do things as a couple. And if you get too large an age gap, then essentially you're in different cultures. You know, you, you know, you grow up with different songs and, 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 and if the cultural gap gets too large, you don't understand each other. Uh, so, so, so there are constraints on that. But if you look at contexts where there are no constraints of that sort, so historically kings, emperors, despots, uh, et cetera, and I'll give one more modern example, um, they basically prefer young, fertile, attractive females and 
if they have harems, they stock the harems with those and then circulate them out when they're 30 and so forth. And so, so if you look at, at marriage systems that are unconstrained, um, then the, the preferences are more likely to be revealed. Or within cultures, that is, if you look at men who are in a position to get what they want. So as Mick Jagger noted, you can't always get what you want, but if you try sometimes, um, you get what you need. I hear that it, that most of the time he got what he needed. Right, right. You know? he, he got what he wanted. Right. Uh, yeah, and maybe what he needed. But he, he was in a position, uh, I don't know if he still is, he's in his 70s now, uh, but he was in a position, as was, uh, let's say, Rod Stewart, to take another example, or Leonardo DiCaprio. Uh, if you are a male who's in a position where there are thousands of women potentially available to you and you can have your pick, then you see that clearer expression for younger females. Uh, there was a chart that was floating around the Internet of the, the girlfriends of Leonardo, Leonardo DiCaprio as he got older, you know, so he's getting older and older, and the graph of the age of the, his girlfriends, it basically stayed the same. It was in the early, early 20s or 